Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel, baby. Today we're going to be talking about the 3D printing company Nano Dimension. Ticker symbol NNDM, this company has gone from a 52 week high of $17.89 and during the dips we saw as low as $5.53 for the share. And I believe that this company Nano Dimension has the potential for exponential growth. We're going to be talking about all their partnerships and potential customers including defense agencies, Kathy Wood's opinion on Nano Dimension, how the world is changing and how different industries including the oil industry is actually pivoting and betting on 3D printing. Let's also talk about Yoav Stern and his background and how this man is transforming Nano Dimension to try and make it into a cash cow. Yoav is hiring the right people as well to make sure that this plan happens. We'll talk about all these other industries as well and the new investor presentation that came out in June and how they're going to be creating different revenue streams and incomes. I also want to talk about robotics and how I found out about other companies and how they are utilizing robotics to make their company run smoother and generate more money. One of my boys Frankie also put this up on his Instagram. The history of innovation cycles and let's see how we're coming into this fourth industrial revolution and they call this industry 4.0 before we get into this video if you're able to support the channel please click the join button above my head it's only 99 cents a month and if everybody joins the channel literally i could do this all day every day just analyze companies throw out some dd there for everybody but if you're unable to join channel memberships just you hitting the like button and clicking subscribe is enough for me and also please remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only First things first, I've been buying Nano Dimension every single week since it's come down in price. Imagine it was all the way up at $17.89 and it hasn't even got all of its revenue streams flowing. It hasn't even hit this kind of mass manufacturing point in which you have Stone was talking about 100,000 Nano Dimension dragonflies simultaneously printing. None of these big catalysts have actually hit. So we haven't seen major sales, major adoption. We've been held back by the C19 virus. So it's retreated from $17.89 all the way down to I think it was $5.50. I was the lowest I saw it and i decided to just go aggressive and each week i'm buying bit by bit nano dimension so now what are the institutions doing how much do they own and what is their average price well according to fintel we have the premium version here institutional owners are 161 in total there's 141 that are long only and there's 25% institutional shares. As you guys may know, one of the largest shareholders includes ARK Invest, who own millions of shares of Nano Dimension. And using this Fintel premium version, we can actually see how much they've increased their share ownership and at what cost. So if you look over to the left here, you can see in their 3D print ETF, also in their ARK W Israel and ARK Q ETFs, they've got an average price of around $10.54. And in their 3D printing ETF, they've got it at $7.34. So if this is what their average price is, and they're saying they're expecting exponential growth and really good things for nano dimension what do they believe this company is going to be worth in the future as you can see here they have 5.3 million shares in arc w 8.4 million shares in arc q 789,000 in their Israel ETF and in their print ETF they have 1.9 million shares and according to lucid tracking if you guys want to use it it's in my description box below the link is there I use the premium version so I can see everything you can see here that they have over 61 million dollars in their ARC Q 61 million dollars in their ARC W 1.5 million in their print ETF and 5.8 million dollars in their Israel ETF so in total it's nearly 130 million dollars worth so why are they so bullish on nano dimension here is Kathy Woods from ARK Invest and she's going to be talking about her nano dimension thesis. NNDM, anything on N, uh, like, uh, you know, what you know. Yeah, 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 nano dimension actually yeah. is, uh, originally it used to call itself a, a 3D printed circuit board company. Now it's broadened its view of itself, you know, defining the market to a 3D printed technology device company. It's getting incredible business from defense agencies around the world. So good old Kathy just said that they're getting a lot of interest from defense companies around the world. So let's explore that. There was a recent partnership between them and a German company. So they've created a joint venture between them and a company called Hensolt. This Hensolt AG company, what are they about? Who are they? They are a global high-tech pioneer for defense and security electronics and a market leader in civilian and military sensor solutions. So they formed this joint venture called James, which is Jetted Additively Manufactured Electronics sources. Hensold is here declared as a German defense industry champion with leading market position Europe and global reach. So for 2020, they generated 1.2 billion euros. They have around 5,600 employees and they're continuously expanding their portfolio in cyber and developing new products to combat a wide range of threats based on innovative approaches to data management, robotics and cybersecurity. Well, 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 not only that big daddy, they just won a billion dollar contract for Pegasus, which is a reconnaissance system. 
Did I pronounce that right? So we've got a joint venture partnership. You can see you have Stern there, very happy man. With this defense company that is winning multi-billion dollar contracts all across the world. Let's also take a look at some of the other partners after we explore this. So check this out. Hensolt has been offered and awarded this contract by the German Federal Office of Bundeswehr Equipment information technology and in-service support and they're going to be supplying airborne electronic signals intelligence system called Pegasus. So Pegasus forms the core for a sovereign reconnaissance network and the basis for future capability development in the field of self-protection and electronic warfare. We can see up here, oh damn. So imagine Nano Dimension has a partnership with Hensolt. Hensolt is winning these massive billion dollar contracts and they're working on electronic warfare and systems for electronic warfare. Are they gonna need high performance electronic devices? Are they gonna need high performance electronic components? Yes. So Kathy Woods also said that ARK Invest likes to look at where defense agencies and defense companies are putting their money. And remember, we've also got a partnership with L3 Harris. This is a juicy big company that is always winning contracts as well. Back in February 2021, we sent some parts up to space to the International Space Station with L3 Harris. If we scroll down the article, you will see that we actually sent L3 Harris RF circuit boards that were 3D printed by Nano Dimension Limited. And what does this company do? They do $18 billion in annual revenue, 48,000 employees and customers in more than 100 different countries. These guys are always looking at innovation and how to deliver end-to-end -end solutions. And what they provide is advanced defense and commercial technologies across air, land, sea, space, and cyber domains. Remember, they got a Pentagon contract alongside SpaceX, and this was for a missile tracking system. Bang, just like that, $193 million. And what's good to see is when we have partnerships with these companies and if we're going to be 3D printing for these companies, give them the machine, lease the machine to them, let them continue to print and us just make that reoccurring revenue money. If we take a look at the revenues of these kind of defense companies, look at this one for L3 Harris. So we use Statista.com here and this is for the financial years of 2015 to the financial years of 2020. It grew from $3.8 billion a year in annual revenue all the way up to $18 billion a year. And I think this is going to be a lot more in the future so war is actually now changing as well we now have cyber threats we now have electronic warfare we also have space warfare coming into play so i reckon these guys are going to be getting a big juicy amount of revenue for years to come and the contracts will keep increasing in price too back in 2018 as well nano dimension became a certified vendor for the u.s department of defense this at the time sent the stock price rocketing but what about other defense agencies other defense contractors well, at the end of 2020, we can see here November 5th, this article was released and it was about the Dragonfly LDM and it was purchased by an Australian defense contractor. And with a lot of these sales, they haven't been able to be finalized. So we may have lots of sales in the pipeline, but because of C19, we haven't been able to close them and actually get the machine delivered to them, installed, and also train up their staff on how to use the machine. So we've got America, we got Germany in there, we've got now Australia. And in terms of the whole world, we're now moving into Industry 4.0. So we're talking about cybersecurity, cloud computing, mobile technologies, machine to machine, 3D printing, advanced robotics, big data analytics, internet of things, RFID technologies, and cognitive computing. And if we look at the evolution of industry from 1.0 to 4.0, we can see that before the 1700s, we were using horse and car in order to do manual labor. And during the first industrial revolution towards the early 1800s, we now moved to the use of water and steam powered engines and other types of machine tools. So this is the history of the innovation cycles. During the first wave, we were using water power, textiles and iron for about 60 years. Then came the second wave of innovation where we had this cycle of steam power, rail, steel. Moving into the third wave where we had 50 years of electricity, chemicals, internal combustion engine come through. And then we started to break away. We started to go into petrochemicals, electronics, aviation in the fourth wave during the 1950s to 1990. And for 30 years during that fifth wave, we started to produce the digital network, software, new media. But now we're we're at this sixth wave of innovation where artificial intelligence, the internet of things, robotics and drones, as well as clean technology is expected to change the way our world works over the next 25 years. So what will this industry 4.0 bring? It will empower business owners to have better control and understanding of every aspect of their operation and it allows them to instantly leverage data to boost productivity, improve processes and drive growth. So where have we seen this before? So I don't know if you guys know this group. This is a retail company 
company Decathlon. They sell lots of sportswear. And apparently, the way that they do inventory and stock control, it's similar to Amazon. What they have is robots inside their warehouses. So the robots can scan the shelves and they can read how much inventory they have. So I don't think this is cheap, but over time, I think that robots are going to get a lot cheaper. They're going to have better systems as well, and it's going to be competing for cost price. Robots don't get sick. They just need maintenance. They don't need holidays. So these guys could make even more revenue if they don't have to pay that much staff to be doing inventory checks. And I was also searching around to see if other companies were using robots. Apparently these robots, what they do is they have an upfront cost of $1,700 and then they pay a monthly servicing fee for both maintenance and they pay an insurance fee too. And apparently this Bossa Nova robot was actually used by Walmart in 2017 and they had deployment at 50 locations. What would the robots do? They would simplify the work routine in stores using machine vision to scan shelves and identify what products needed restocking. So now Yoav Stern has said that the Dragonfly machine and Nano Dimension will be a key part of Industry 4.0. So Yoav Stern was talking about the mass manufacturing of electrical components, high performance ones and also devices. But what has this man done before in terms of sales and how can he guarantee that all of these sales will come through and how will he be able to grow revenues? Well if we look into the history of Yoav Stern, he's actually he built several companies from humble beginnings and he's actually converted companies from having $8 million in annual revenue to $330 million. I know a lot of you also invest in bio-nanogenomics and NNDM and probably Palantir as well. But if we remember Jason Pryor, when we took him on to be part of our team, this guy is also a seasoned sales leader who has scaled early stage business to hundreds of millions in revenue. So similar to Yoav, he started and grew businesses from $8 million in revenue to over $225 million. So now these defense contractors are always getting big juicy contracts from governments. Nano Dimension supplies printers to some of the largest contract manufacturers in the world. We also supply to research institutes for groundbreaking innovation. Not only does Yoav have a history of scaling up businesses, but they've just hired an Amazon executive to be part of the board. So they got this guy who used to be in the Navy, a US Navy submarine officer, and he also used to be part of the PCB industry, so he knows how it works. Sean Patterson, and he's going to join as president of Nano Dimension. So he just came from um, Amazon. He was actually there June 2021. He held leadership roles in transportation and healthcare groups. He's also scaled operations, programs and engineering groups from pilot organizations to hundreds of facilities as well as thousands of employees and assets. This guy has also managed manufacturing operations. He's led multiple aerospace and defense manufacturing plants and he also helped out and was involved in a strategic $1 billion plus acquisition. So we're building a great team. We can be utilized by many different industries that are blowing up and growing exponentially over the next few years, including aerospace, research, defense, medical and the automotive industry, the electronic cars, baby. But even more interesting is this other industry, big oil. So now big oil is actually transitioning and starting to use additive manufacturing to cut costs and to increase profitability. So as we can see here on oilprice.com, they were talking about big oil's digital pivot marks the beginning of a new era for the industry. The oil and gas industry is embracing new technologies to save time and costs and most recently reduced carbon footprint of its supply chain. So Big O is now starting to utilize artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital twins, robotics. The world's biggest oil and gas firms and oil field services providers are betting on 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing. So if we check this out, you guys may know this company already as an example is Shell. To reduce their costs and delivery time as well as their carbon footprint, 3D printing technology slashed the final cost of maintenance by 90%. So companies like Baker Hughes and Worth Industry North America winner announced that they're having these customized 3D printing services. We also have our own customized 3D printing services. And they're offering solutions and services to people in oil and gas, renewables, power generation, maritime, automotive, and aerospace industries. So remember when Nano Dimension bought this company as well called Nano Fabrica, and they focus on these very small micro mechanics 3D printing. They bought this for around about 50 to 60 mil, I think it was, ranging between 50 54 million to 59 million dollars. Well, they've just stated here in their most recent June presentation, Nano Dimension has said that Fabrica's business model works kind of razor, razor blades kind of way. So they're stating that the hardware, the purchase price is about $350,000 and in reoccurring revenues every single year, you're getting $100,000 per machine per year. So this acquisition alone is going to be able to generate them some juicy reoccurring revenue per machine. And as I stated to you guys before, you see this Piezo skin. It was this Italian company in which they're going to look to innovate 
and completely disrupt the medical industry and the way that we look after patients is changing we're moving from this biomedical model holistic model we're now moving to a preventative model so you can actually look after patients in the community and probably in the hospitals as well using these small kind of plasters which are able to read your vital signs how crazy is that it's almost a very thin layer plaster and it's going to be able to innovate and change the way that we live so there's a lot of people within the community that are going to rely on this and they're going to utilize this really well any changes in blood pressure in temperature does this person have an infection is this person going to have a heart attack are they about to have a stroke is their blood pressure going through the roof what is going on you'll be able to monitor it using these piezo skins and i think that's what was explained during a presentation as we can see here they're like thin like plasters and I remember when Massimo, Dr. Massimo Di Vittorio was explaining it during his presentation. Not only that, but I heard that they can mechanically power themselves. So we can see here the CBN has developed over the last five years for harvesting energy and sensing from mechanical sources. So check this out. The most flexible piezoelectric transducer, high sensitivity to low external stimulus, no toxic materials are used, and they are waterproof. Electrical insulation due to Pauline C coating. Some serious stuff is in the works and I can imagine being a nursing student myself, how useful it will be to monitor people's vital signs just by having a thin little plaster stuck to them without having to stress them out with all the cables and wires i don't know how well established this product is and where it is right now if it's still in prototype stage or if they're ready to move but i can see the vision of what they're trying to do and i can see the power of the technology in the future overall with the pcb industry being i think 75 billion dollars these new innovations as well coming into play that can disrupt the medical industry defense partners winning billion dollar contracts i see nano dimension as being a force to be reckoned with if Nano Dimension is going to be providing the machines and providing the ink, they're going to be getting reoccurring revenue from all of these growing emerging industries. Damn, this is a long juicy video, but thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your price predictions and price targets for Nano Dimension. I set a $100 target on this one as well. It's currently under $2 billion in market cap, but what I think it could actually do in the future in terms of revenue and growth is humongous. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Remember, none of this is financial advice, it's for entertainment only. If you're able to join, please please click the join button above my head it's only 99 cents a month you can join any tier and it'll really help me to transition away from working so much to actually doing this full time i would love to do this full time for you guys but if you're unable to just you hitting like and hitting subscribe is enough for me thank you so much for your love and support and i'm going to catch you in the next video mr Invest a lot. over and out baby